Hello, I am back. Hace tiempo que no hacemos esto. It's been a while, guys, but I figured that today it is the first day of fall, and because of that, it's a nice chill in the air here in Maryland, and uh, we're going to hook up some Sancocho, Bordetta style. This may not be your traditional Sancocho, but if you try this out, I guarantee that it's going to be absolutely amazing, okay? So, if you can just take a look at what I'm starting to... Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Wait, sorry. Must we forget that we do have to kick it off by... A little bit of this. Uh, Chevis, you never uh, gave me your uh, sponsorship, so now I'm going with Glen Morangi. By the way, if you're into single malt alcohol, I mean uh, whiskey, for the price, this is unbeatable. La Santa, you can get it around for 50 bucks everywhere, uh, but actually here in Maryland, it's around 35, so there is absolutely no way you can go wrong with this scotch. Nastrovia. Uh, Oh, amazing. Okay, so if you're going to take a look at the ingredients that I'm going to start off with, um, this gives you a full view. Now we're going to just take it over here and we're going to show you one by one the things that I use for this. Uh, basically, Sancocho is like a Puerto Rican soup. It's a stew. It's very, very hearty. Uh, it's got a lot of ingredients the way I make them. Uh, and usually, traditionally, it's either beef or pork. Uh, some people use chicken. I use all three. Go figure. So let me just show you what I've got going on. We have some chorizo, Spanish chorizo. We have some pork, and this is basically pork shoulder cut up. Uh, some chicken breast. We have some beef, uh, fresh corn, onions, green plantains, although these weren't green, green, green. I got to give it to you. Uh, and some calabaza, uh, also known as butternut squash and uh, some onions, and uh, then an assortment of Goya products that I use, and Badia products. Uh, so we've got the sofrito, we've got recaito, oregano, tomillo, uh, hoja de laurel. Uh, it's gonna be great. So I'm gonna just start doing the prep first, okay? Basically sauteing the onions and sauteing some of the uh, chorizo and browning a little bit of the beef first, and then we're gonna start and we're gonna start dumping uh, ingredients. Also, in the refrigerator, in the freezer, I also have some yuca and some malanga and delpia. So we're gonna add that on to the mix later on. Uh, like I said, it's very hearty soup, um, very heavy to the stomach, uh, but you eat this and it'll take you to the next level. Okay, so I'll be back in a few minutes, all right? Salud. So we're going to start with the uh, sautéing. Uh, I wish I had specific amounts. Um, put a bunch of garlic in there. Let's start with that. It's always good. Okay. And then we're going to take the, uh, the onions. We'll throw onions in there. This is only for the sautéing portion. Uh, we're going to later on do the, uh, the stuff inside the, uh, inside the cauldron over there. Let's call it. The chorizo in there. And we're going to take some recaito, two of these, and two sofrito. Seems like a lot, but remember, there's a lot of ingredients that are going to go after that, okay? So basically what you want to do is stir them around. Some people use uh, olive oil. I like to use butter. Um, you know, cholesterol delight, but it does taste better. And this is all about taste. If you're going to be thinking about diets, if you're going to be thinking about uh, healthy stuff, this is not it, you know. <laughs> but if you're going to be talking about something that is absolutely delicious and will make you smile and sit down afterwards and say, God, I wish I smoked so I could have a cigarette, <laughs> this is probably it, okay? So we're going to get this going. Uh, I'll get all of these prepped up. We're going to put a couple of more ingredients in there, some oregano some bay leaves, and then we're going to start doing the stewing, okay? So uh, we'll be right back, and uh, we'll take it off from there, okay? Thank you. Okay, guys, so as you can see here, we've got the chorizo sauteing with the oregano. We put a little bit of tomillo. We put some bay leaves in there, some uh, hoja de laurel, bay leaves, and we put a little bit of basil, okay? Again, not traditional style, but this is the way I do it. I like the way it comes out. I've never had any complaints from any of the people that have savored it. Um, so go for it. With anything, seasoning is usually to your taste. So it's, it's going to be just about how you like it to taste. Um, as with anything, you see that I don't, I don't put any type of specific amounts. It's because I, I usually know what I like and I like to uh, 
you know, play around and, and experiment. Uh, but if you do uh, check out the one of the best uh, ones that I've seen was on Waba, and they had a great recipe for this. So you should be able to follow that as well. Okay, that's going really nicely. Uh, we're going to move this over to the pot, and then we're going to start sauteing some of the beef. Okay, we'll be right. There. So the beef has been browning here. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to transfer all of this into the pot. Okay, the cauldron, as I like to mm -hmm. call it, and that is going to continue doing its thing in there. We don't want to get the beef too cooked because the idea is for it to slowly cook there for a while. Uh, but now what we're going to do is we're going to take the pork, throw that in there, and the chicken, we're also going to throw it in there, okay? We're going to take a little bit of sazon, I mean of adobo. That much? I don't know. <laughs> Looks good. Okay, and then we're just going to move this around, all right? Let's take a look. Come take a look. You should start to see some of the uh, meat browning, okay? The idea is to put that in there for a little bit, let it brown, but not cook too much, okay? And then we're gonna be putting the ingredients later. Um, because some of the stuff that I have, it's already pre-done and it's in the freezer, we'll put those last, but we're gonna put in the potatoes, we're gonna put in the uh, all the fresh stuff, the potatoes, the uh, plantains, and uh, the, the squash in there before so it can all cook at the same time, all right? So now, we're gonna take some of this. It's basically some salsa de tomate, goya. You can use any kind that you like, quite frankly. Um, it's not necessarily important for it to be one brand or another, but I am brand loyal. And I know that these guys, one of these days, they're gonna give me a sponsorship and I will be able to stop working in IT and actually start cooking for a living, which would be fantastic. Man. I'm actually thinking about opening a restaurant. Triple B's, it's gonna be called. <laughs> Boobs, bacon, and beer. It's gonna be the shit, believe me. All right, so we've already put the uh, sauce in there. And for each one that you put in, you're gonna put in one of water, okay? So for each one, one of water. And now, put it on medium and just move it around, okay? You're gonna move it around and you're gonna let that cook in there for a little bit. We'll put some more water later on, but the idea is to get uh, the flavor of the meat infused with all of this stuff, okay? Now, I've already put in one sazon, okay? But we're also gonna put in uh, some chicken bouillon and some beef bouillon sticks in there, okay? Sprinkle it around. This will be a little bit salty right now, but when you put in the water, it's going to dilute it quite a bit. And then also the uh, potatoes and all of the roots are going to suck up a lot of the flavor as well. Okay? So, let's not worry about that for right now. Let's just get the base going really hard. Uh, very, very flavorful, very tasty, uh, and very robust. So, this is going to be the joint. Trust me. All right. That in there. We're gonna move it around. Okay. Now we're gonna leave that there probably for around a good 20 minutes on medium. The idea is to get the uh, the uh, the actual tomato sauce to actually start boiling a little bit, not hard boil, just a little plop 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 boil uh, before we start putting in more water and then adding all the rest of the ingredients. Okay. So I'll be back within maybe in a half an hour and then we'll take it up from there. Okay. Hope you're enjoying so far. Didn't tell me I was on camera. People gonna think I'm a lush. Anyway, guys, I am a lush. But so come on over here. I want to show you what I was talking about with the boiling. It's just very, very low boil. If you see, I got it set on four, so it's even lower than medium. Uh, and you want to leave it there for a good 15 to 20 minutes. However, I decided that I want to change my mind, and I'm gonna move it from here to a crock pot. So. Uh, to a slow cooker. The idea is I want to make sure that the meat gets infused with all of the flavors that I put in the initial uh, batch, but then I, I think I have way too many ingredients with the roots and the starches and it's not going to fit in this pot. So if I had a bigger pot, I'd just do it here. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to move it over to the crock pot, finish it up over there. 
uh, and I'm gonna let it cook while I'm watching the football game and drinking. All right? Boricua, para que tú lo sepa. Okay, esto va a quedar de show, de show. Vela. All right? Talk to you guys in a few.